So we're into 2012, and people are telling me about the New Year's resolutions they've made. When I was um, very young, I used to say, I don't believe in New Year's resolutions. If something is important enough to want to do it, why not just do it rather than resolve that you will do it? <clears throat> But now I've had many, many years to think about that, and what I've come to is if something is really important enough to do it, why not just do it instead of making <laughs> resolutions about it? And I guess it kind of fits with a, a Buddhist perspective and the Dharma teachings, which would say any changes that we can make in terms of not doing something that we feel is not good for us or beginning to do something that would be beneficial can only be done in the moment that it can be done or in the moment that we decide not to do it. In other words, if we are a smoker and we want to stop smoking, the only time you can really stop smoking is in that moment when you really want to light up a cigarette. Well, all the rest of the time really doesn't count. You want to lose a couple of pounds. The time that you do that is in the moment when you really want that extra piece of cake. Or you really don't want to go and work out. And it's in that moment that you accomplish what you had resolved to do. So the resolution kind of uh, from a Buddhist perspective, doesn't have as much weight as what we do in the moment. However, according to research, there will be more than 100,000 people in the United States who have made New Year's resolutions, and over the course of the year, they will break them, or, or maybe not, you never know. And it's an interesting tradition. You know, it dates all the way back to the Babylonians. According to people who research this sort of thing, I don't know why anyone wants to research when we started making resolutions, but nevertheless, someone did, and it goes all the way back that far. The early Christians had uh, a tradition, which was on the first day of the year, they would reflect upon mistakes that they felt they made or things that they could have done better and at that time they decide that they will do better. They won't make those mistakes again. That's a, a form of New Year's resolution. It's interesting to note that our great-great-grandparents may very well have not celebrated New Year's Day on January 1st. <clears throat> the British Empire, including the American colonies, <clears throat> did not adopt the reformed calendar until 1752. People research that also. <laughs> and until that time, New Year's Day was celebrated in March. Now here's the interesting question. If you think about now and going into the future, doesn't it seem, if you're really honest with your own thought process, doesn't it seem that New Year's Day would always be celebrated from now on, on January 1st? Because after all, that is the first day of the year, right? But if our ancestors celebrated the beginning of the year in March, why is it not just as likely, or at least possible, that at some point in the future, New Year's would be celebrated on Sunday other than January 1st. I mean, our ancestors weren't stupid. It was different. But this is just a tiny example of how the mind tends to think of things in fixed, non-malleable process. 
This is the way things are. New Year's is celebrated on January 1st, and it always will be. But why? So perhaps a worthwhile resolution might be to see if we can, in the course of this year, expand our thinking, expand our views, open to possibilities that currently don't seem likely. Create a spaciousness around your thinking. Don't resolve to do it, but just every so often, when you really know, just entertain the possibility that maybe not. It's called beginner's mind. Give it a try in 2012. In fact, why don't we sit with it right now for a few minutes? <laughs> <laughs>